Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So adding texture to a prop is one of my favorite ways to make a new object look like an old one. But choosing the right approach can be challenging. So if you've ever needed to add a bit of texture to a project you're working on, but weren't quite sure where to start, well, here's some of my favorite methods to get you going. Spray adhesive, regardless of the brand, is a great way to apply a light layer to any prop you're making. It's applied from a distance of roughly 12 to 14 inches, and you can build up the amount by applying additional layers as it starts to dry. This is the fastest way to add texture on this list and is almost always the first method I use. This is also a great base layer if you wanted to apply heavier textures like sawdust to any prop because it's an adhesive first. The texture it leaves is just an added bonus. It's also a great way to hide those pesky layer lines on higher resolution 3D prints. The next in line is powdered wood putty. It's a great complement to the spray adhesive if you want to build up an area quickly, since the powder very easily sticks to the adhesive, but adds bulk without a ton of weight like sawdust would. Apply it immediately after the spray adhesive by dusting it over the surface or applying it with a throwaway brush until you've reached the level of texture you're after. It can also be mixed into acrylic paint for heavier texture like the next method. Baking soda can be used on a variety of projects to create bigger texture, but where it really shines is in creating the look of cast iron. Add two parts baking soda to one part paint and apply it to your object in a stippling motion to create the look of peaks and valleys. A bit of dry brushing with a lighter color once dry will really help the texture to stand out. If a really chunky texture is what you're after, then this method is for you. It can be a bit temperamental, but it looks great once it's dry. Apply the kosher salt to a still tacky base layer of paint, and then spray a top coat over it and let it dry. Then flake off the excess salt. What's left behind closely resembles the rust you see on really old oxidized metal, and looks great with a color wash over the top to give an extra highlight to the texture. The biggest texture on my list comes from using wall texture spray. It comes in a variety of styles and many of the cans have an adjustment dial to help give a variety of textures. Spray it on from a distance and build up to your final texture before letting it fully dry. Then you can paint it with anything from spray paint to craft paint. I use this for larger pieces that may not be seen up close, but I still want it to have some visible texture. It's a great way to give some organic large scale texture to any prop. All of these methods should be sealed to ensure their longevity and prevent any weird reactions with different paints. And of course, be sure to test it on scrap material or in an inconspicuous spot before applying it to your entire piece just to get a feel for the process. So there's just a small fraction of the different approaches you can take when adding texture to a prop, and hopefully this video will help to take out some of the guesswork the next time you need to add a bit of texture. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.